Hi, Tommy. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you for taking time, sitting down mm. with us and talking about Under the Red Cloud. Yeah, great. So, Tommy, uh, Under the Red Cloud came out uh, in the beginning of September 2015, so mm. pretty much six months ago. Um, looking back, what can you tell us? What was the reception of the album and are you happy with mm. the reception? Mm. Yes, we are very happy. Uh, it was first time we decided to use producer and uh, Jens and uh, uh, I think he bring uh, kind of new stuff to uh, our music as well as like he was kind of like seventh member because he already did a pre pre production in the rehearsing place and so he had some ideas to so song structures and stuff like this so uh, and also how he worked he was like very strict to us like we were sometimes playing in a studio from seven in the morning till 12 o'clock in a Long night days. and, and uh, yeah and uh, also his like mixing skills is amazing so uh, we are very satisfied and uh, I think the response has been very good as well only like almost only plus things from the fans I think. This was the first time actually working with an outside producer um, what what took you so long to decide to actually get a producer? Mm. Well, we have had some ideas before to uh, ask, ask somebody to produce the albums, but uh, mainly it has been that the producer he hears the first uh, first time he hears the <laughs> band's new stuff is when we start the recording, so it's impossible to like produce any song structures when you're just uh, recording drums in, so it's too late, I, I mean. And I think we have pretty uh, strong opinions inside the band anyway, so uh, we thought that we don't need any producer, but of course it's good to have somebody who's like deciding, like is, is last who's deciding how we do th this and uh, not doing like compromises too much. Um. First of all, how did you decide on uh, on a producer like mm. Jens? Why did you think that Jens would be the, m the perfect mm. match? And what did he bring to the table? Mm. You know, well, how did he make Amorphous better, mm. the record better? Yeah, uh, f I think uh, work he he has done past was like why we chose him because he has made great produced albums like Opet and so on, some Paradise Lost, and uh, then we were asking uh, from uh, like bands we know and have worked with him uh, that how how was it like and uh, they were recommending him so it came from that and we just asked if he is free at the time and he was and uh, I think he bring I think first thing he was saying in a uh, rehearsing place when he came to Helsinki for a week before studio like uh, that we have to raise almost every song's tempos and he was calling our tempos like old old man's tempos <laughs> uh, and uh, to us th that felt like really strange uh, at the beginning because they were like it sounded like almost like some children's songs to us like well it cannot be this fast but uh, uh, in the end that was right solution and uh, first of all he was good motivator he was like you could trust when he said it's good because uh, normally <coughs> it's you're very self-critic when you're playing and uh, you want to hear it if the tape was good or not but uh, this time when Jens said it's good I, we didn't even uh, want to listen to it because we knew that it's it must be good if Jens is proving it so he's very strict and almost uh, like uh, perfectionist I think. I saw in a making of video um, on, on YouTube, um, that the whole band, or during pre-production, the whole band was together in the mm. rehearsal space, mm. playing the songs, pre-producing the songs. Mm. Yeah, to us it's always been that we are taking, uh, of course everybody is doing like some demo versions at home studio from own songs and then send it to everyone so you can hear a little bit what's going on. But then we are always uh, start from the rehearsing place then and with all the members. I think that's the only way to do it. Like uh, otherwise it 
you have to like play it live <laughs> with the band and then you know if it works or not because sometimes you do at home you know, like home demo sessions and you think that this is great tempo and everything is great but when you go into rehearsing place it's like no it's not working but uh, yeah we were recording the rehearsals as well at the time and then Jens started to send us like re a little bit like his ideas and tempo changes so we have to practice that like two weeks before the studio so you practiced before going to the studio yeah, yeah that's good <laughs> good way but yeah after after Jens was visiting we had to had to uh, practice more it has been said that music consumers these days don't mm. take the time to sit down and listen to a whole album well I don't uh, I still want to hear and listen uh, albums and uh, I we still are go going to do albums so I'm uh, I'm sure that there is always somebody who's <laughs> who wants to do uh, hear the albums not just songs so yeah I, I agree that maybe young young listeners not maybe heavy metal but like rap music I think they are just listening songs and they don't necessarily know who's even singing it and uh, if, if you ask about that song three months later they're like oh it's gone it's history and old school and like maybe it comes like as uh, nostalgic memories later to them but uh, yeah it seems like it's uh, like you just use that music and throw it away but we're not thinking that way exactly and especially since you've been around for decades mm. Mm, yes right? yeah, yeah. which proves it mm. yeah, for me it was very interesting thank you very much hey, all you. the best for the rest of the tour and mm. the next tour yeah thank you